there is a problem in science, and basically all the world of science that uses advanced statistical methods. Uh, and it's the kind of problem that means that all those nice results that we get out of that research might be a little bit more arbitrary than we'd like to think, rather than sort of being universally True. Now, you've heard all this sort of thing before, the problems with science, the replication crisis, p-hacking, outright fraud. But even if you do all the steps right, you do everything properly, uh, you do it with the, the, the pursuit of honest truth, even then, there is the problem of software. Let me tell you what I mean. So let's say that I want to run a standard statistical method, an advanced one of the kind that you might do in scientific research. Let's say that I'm doing some feature selection. I got a lot of variables to predict some outcome and I wanted to pick just some of them. And I'll use a very standard method that anybody doing this sort of thing would have heard about, the lasso. Uh, now I will load up my favorite programming language R and I will run some code uh, to predict uh, the health grade of a restaurant, right? The, however they pass the health code and I'll just run this and it'll tell me which variables I can drop from my model uh, to make it a bit more parsimonious. Let's see what it says. Okay, so it says, so it says I can drop two variables. It says I can drop uh, when the health inspection took place and also how many uh, different locations in the chain of the restaurant that it's Great, so I can drop two variables, fantastic. So now I can move forward with my scientific study of you know, restaurant health uh, and know that I don't need those two variables to predict the outcome. Uh, but you know, I, I, now that I'm thinking about it, you know, I've, uh, I've been wanting to learn more Python for machine learning recently. So let me just run the exact same analysis uh, using the exact same uh, model of the lasso, uh, just using you know sort of standard defaults uh, in Python. So let me uh, load that up in Python here, and I will run it. Uh, and it says, uh, of course, that I can drop uh, one variable, uh, not two, uh, like I said in R. Okay, well, I mean, I'm not that skilled in Python. Maybe I just uh, I'm not used to it as much. Maybe I'll I'll try a third language. Maybe I know I have some history with. And maybe I'll use Stata. Stata's got lasso, so I'll I'll load up this lasso in Stata, and I'll run the exact same analysis and it, oh great, it says I can just w drop one variable, uh, except it's a different variable than the one that I dropped in Python. So I've got three languages here uh, running the same data and the same very standard estimator, Lasso, uh, and I'm getting three different results. Uh, so that's not great. Hmm. Uh, so what's going on here? One thing you might think is, well, of course, you know, I, I didn't write the programs that actually run the Lasso here. I downloaded packages or used uh, software that was written for me to run lasso estimation. Um, and uh, when I do that, uh, you know, you might think, okay, maybe they're wrong. Maybe I'm, one of them has to be right. So the other two must be incorrect. They must have errors in the estimation process. Maybe the code has errors in it. Um, but that's probably not what's going on. Instead, probably what's going on is that there are different options and parameters being set in these different languages. In other words, different defaults. When it comes to any estimation method, uh, there's going to be different ways that you can run it. Uh, in the case of Lasso, for example, you might have to pick uh, the penalty parameter, which standard is done by cross-validation. But again, how many cross-validation sets do you run? Uh, you know, what kind of iteration tolerance do you have? All sorts of stuff you have to pick in order to be able to do one of these estimations. And you have to make these choices. Now, there are way too many choices to actually really want to think through every single one of those things as you're doing it, um, which means that most of the time the software will choose it for you. It will have a default. And the different lasso estimation packages in these three different languages use different defaults. And so they produce different results. Now, this doesn't mean that any of them is wrong. It means that they're trying to do different things. They've made different choices about what they think the standard user would want to do. And it's giving us that. Uh, it's just that they don't agree on what the standard user wants to do. Now, I've given this example using Lasso, but let's take another example. Let's talk about logistic regression. Uh, now, logistic regression is a very standard method. You're trying to use a bunch of variables to predict whether something happened or not. Uh, it's a decades-old method. Uh, it's been around for a long time, and the sort of standard way that you do it is fairly standardized. Uh, until, of course, you get to the sklearn package in Python, which is a very popular machine learning package. Now, sklearn was written not for statisticians, but for machine learning people who are slightly different. They do different things. Now, if you go into the sklearn logistic regression function, it does not do the standard thing, uh, despite being called logistic regression, just like you might call it logistic regression in any other package, it runs penalized logistic regression, which might be the more common thing that a machine learning person might want to do. But you have to read the documentation to figure out that that's what it's doing. And so if you were going to run a logistic regression and you happened to pick up sklearn to do it, you would get a very different result than you would get running in any other language. And you might not even know that that's what's happening uh, if you don't read the documentation closely enough. This can be a big problem. It means that people are not getting the results they think 
that they're getting. The defaults are set differently uh, between SK Learn and other languages, and even between different functions in SK Learn. Logistic regression is by default penalized, but linear regression is not. And it's not just the machine learning people either. Uh, there's no shortage of questions online of why my standard errors don't line up between two different languages. People trying to get their standard errors from R to match their standard errors in Stata or vice versa and trying to figure it out. And this can be quite difficult. There's lots of calculations that go into standard errors. Uh, if we say something like, hey, I ran cluster robust standard errors, a very standard thing to do. There are lots of ways of doing that, not just one. Uh, or heteroscedasticity robust standard errors, another very standard thing. But if you look in the documentation, there's like six different ways you can run that. And depending on the language you're in, they're going to choose a different default way. Or another Python example, uh, in the most common way of running a linear regression in Python, the stats models package, uh, it by default does not include a constant in the model, which would be the extremely common thing to do in every other statistics package that I've ever seen. And in fact, is also the default thing that you do if you input a st stats models regression using the formula API as opposed to the matrix API. And you'll find, of course, questions online. Why does my stats models linear regression not look like my regression from all these other packages? And these are just the people who thought to notice that they're different in those other packages. More commonly, somebody would run it once in one language and say, oh, I guess that's the result. Let me put it in my paper. And therein lies the problem. And I want to be clear, this problem is not limited to the few specific examples I happened to pick out for this video. In fact, when I was writing my book, I did everything in three languages, R, Stata, and Python, all the code examples in three languages. And the number of times when the results did not exactly match up between all three of the languages was, I mean, you could check it out for yourself if you want to run all the code examples in the book. It was a lot. When you run a analysis in a single language and then you say, well, that's the answer, I'll publish it, you are going along with the parameters and choices that have been set in that particular language. Uh, even if you go through carefully and think through, okay, do I want, you know, how many cross-validation sets do I want? Do I want penalization? What do I want? How do I want to set my standard errors? Exactly which way do I want to adjust it? And it does exactly what you've said. That's only the parameters that you're thinking about. There's all sorts of other choices that have to get made and you might not ever think about. So for example, uh, let's say you've got some sort of statistical process that has to iterate a bunch of times to try to get closer and closer to the answer. How close does it need to get before it stops iterating? That's a choice that needs to be made, and it's made differently in different languages or even different packages and estimators within a given language. Or degrees of freedom corrections. Or as I mentioned, the default way of calculating standard errors. These are tiny, tiny things that you wouldn't really even think about if you weren't the one making the program in the first place. And yet, sometimes they can have an impact on the results that you get. And indeed, sometimes there are errors with these things that you might not ever think about. Uh, here's an old paper uh, back from 2003 uh, that checked the same model and the same data across a bunch of different languages and actually found that they were all wrong uh, because the model could not be solved. It shouldn't have re resulted in an answer at all. And yet, all these different packages uh, not only reported an answer, um, but also reported different answers because of the different ways that their nonlinear optimization worked. Uh, now, this is something that you would probably never think about when running a piece of software is what's the specific algorithm that it uses for doing nonlinear optimization under the hood. Uh, that's not something that a researcher is trained to think about or even would be able to recognize the differences of. But something that's very this low level and feels like it should be so standard is not uh, and can produce different results across different languages. And none of these are necessarily even wrong. Like I said, in that case, they were errors. But in a lot of these cases, they're not necessarily errors. They're just choices made differently. Uh, here's a great example. Here's a package that runs uh, the Callaway and Santa Ana difference and differences estimator. Uh, and um, this is the same package written by the same people across two different languages in R and Stata. And in the options here, uh, you can find an option that you can choose to make the results look like the other language. The same people writing the same estimator uh, in two different languages, made different choices in those two different languages, such that the default results from the same people again would be different depending on which language you happened to choose. And they knew that this would be an issue to the extent that they added an option to make one look like the other. So different software in different languages written by different people or even the same people sometimes have different settings. And these different settings cause the results to be different. Uh, and so what does this all mean? What do we have to worry about really? I mean, first of all, does this mean that all statistical research is fake? Well, it, no, but it, it does mean that it's a little bit more contingent and arbitrary than you might like to think. Uh, these settings, which it, it's impossible to really evaluate every single one of them. I mean, are you really going to investigate 
the specific ways that a nonlinear maximizer is going to affect your results if you tweak some of the parameters in it? Probably not. It's just not feasible to do. Especially when it's not necessarily wrong. Like if you looked in the code, you wouldn't see a problem necessarily. Uh, you would just see that you've chosen one set of reasonable correct answers over a different possibly reasonable set of correct answers. And, you know, neither of them is wrong. They're just different. To be able to really figure it out, you'd have to run every different possible setting on every different set of data to see what works best in every different situation. That's just not feasible. So instead, most of us will not really think that much about it. And I'm certainly guilty of this too. Uh, you run your results in one language, probably whatever language your grad advisor just happened to make you want to learn, because uh, that's the language that they already knew. Uh, and then you go with it. Uh, and then you're done. Uh, and you don't really think about the ways in which switching to a different language or even just changing some of the parameters you don't think about in your estimation software might change the results. The real crucial problem here is that all these methods that we think about as being a method aren't really a method. There are many methods, right? Lasso is not a single method. It's a single sort of concept and procedure, but there's lots of different choices in there. Each choice makes it a different method. And yet we call all of those different methods Lasso. We don't say here is lasso with a uh, lambda of 0.1. Here is lasso with a lambda of 0.2. We make different functions for the two of them. No, we make a single function and then we have you set the lambda inside of it. Uh, and then we sort of assume and hope that people will pay attention to what they've chosen to set that to. And so thinking carefully about what it is that you're actually estimating and going through what the defaults are and not just assuming that the defaults are the correct option, but asking yourself, what is the actual version of this estimator that makes the most sense in my setting? Uh, and how do I run that in this language and potentially in other languages to make them match? It wouldn't be important. And you can imagine the confusion here, right? Like let's take something that pretty much everybody knows about, right? Mean and median, right? We got the mean and the median. They're different ways of taking an average, right? They're both things that you could call the average. You might say average income is this, and you're talking about the median. You might also say average height is this, and you're talking about the mean. Now imagine how confusing it would be if instead of having a mean function and a median function, we just had one function called average. And it was up to you to check really hard to make sure that you knew which one it was doing. How confusing would that be? Uh, but that's what we're doing with Lasso. Right? It'd be ridiculous to have a single function just called average uh, and make you work out after the fact whether you're talking about a mean or a median. Uh, oops, I guess that's what Python does. OK, fine, they also have mean and median functions. But they do have an average function. It doesn't even say in the documentation which average you're getting. So in the case of mean and median, it's a bit more obvious. right? We know what to look for. Uh, but in the case of different parameters in the same algorithm, in the same estimation method, we might not. And when there's not a single agreed upon way to do it, uh, well, then you're sort of floating out in space. You don't necessarily know that you even made a mistake. Somebody looking at your code wouldn't know that you've made a mistake. Even checking against a different language, if you got a different result, you wouldn't know which one of those was a mistake. Or are they both mistakes? Or are neither of them mistakes? And they're both just reasonable ways to do it. So as for what a researcher can do, well, the first important step is to remember that the estimation method is not a single thing. It includes parameters, and those parameters and settings and choices are all important. They all matter. And you have to think carefully about, well, there's not really such a thing as just a regression. There is no such thing as a regression. There's not a single regression button. If there's a regression button on your screen and you press it, it could be doing one of a million different things. And you need to be aware of that, uh, that there's not just a single average. You have to choose mean or median. And so actively making that choice in the setting that you're doing your research in is something that you actively want to be doing. Don't just assume that the defaults are correct because they are the defaults. It's also a good idea to try your results across different languages or even just across different software packages within the same language uh, to see how robust your results might be. If you do get very different results in different languages, again, that doesn't necessarily mean that one of them is an error, but it might encourage you to start thinking about, well, how can I set the parameters such that I do get the same? Result. Remember all those online questions I mentioned earlier uh, that people trying to figure out how to make their standard errors match across languages? They often can find an answer. There are often a set of settings that you can pick that you know corrects the degrees of freedom properly and chooses the correct you know inversion matrix or whatever to get you the same result. It can be done, uh, and in doing so, you know you might not necessarily go with the new language that you tried, but you will now understand better what are the assumptions that are going into the analysis that you did run. You can also just do this in a single language if you don't want to do quite that much, right? Look at the documentation for the estimation package you are using. See what parameters it has. Try to think, well, you know, usually if you don't think a parameter is important for your analysis, you might ignore it. But maybe it matters anyway. Maybe try a range of settings for those parameters. Uh, and again, you might not know which of those of them is right and wrong, but you would at least know whether your results are robust to picking different values. And if they're not, then you have to realize that this result that you got only applies in a particular set of settings. 
uh, that shouldn't affect the results, but somehow do. And that means trying stuff that you might not normally touch, like iteration tolerances. Uh, you might not never think about having to set different settings, but maybe it does make a difference. What if you're an outsider, right? What if you don't really have any control over any of this, uh, but you want to know how it should affect the way that you understand the scientific results that you read about? Well, the results that you can take away from this are largely the same results that you might take away from the replication crisis uh, in general, which is to say that any given single piece of research that you see is never the last word on anything. Uh, and you know, typically we think of that as saying, okay, well, we want to replicate this work, but in a different data set, right? Try it over again on some new data. But this suggests that you might not even need new data to check that out. Uh, somebody going in and looking through the code and seeing what options have been set, and even on the same data set with almost the exact same code, changing some parameters and seeing how robust those results are to different sensitivities that you might check, right? And this is something that if you know how to code, you can even do yourself, even if you're not a researcher. A lot of papers offer replication packages that you can download their data, you can download their code, read the documentation of their estimator, try a couple of different things, see if anything changes. You might find something interesting. All right, that's it. Uh, this is a new kind of video for me, sort of more of a video essay -y kind of thing. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was kind of fun to do. I'm not sure how many of them more I will do, um, but uh, yeah, that's it. This is the kind of point where you would ask for somebody to join your Patreon. Uh, I don't have one of those, uh, but if you like this video, uh, maybe give some money to give directly. Uh, I like them quite a lot. All right, that's it. Thank you very much.